This is your tech news briefing for Thursday, August 18th. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Space is one area you tend to see a lot of global cooperation. But now, as tensions grow between some spacefaring nations, there are calls to find ways to protect satellites and the information they might be gathering from cyber attacks. So what should international standards for satellite cybersecurity look like? European satellite experts and the German government say that country's guidance could be a good model. Joining us to discuss what that model is and why it may be needed is WSJ Pro cybersecurity reporter Catherine Stepp. Hi, Catherine. Thanks for joining me. Hi, Zoe. Thank you. So let's start with why cybersecurity is something that the space industry thinks it needs to think about. So different people I've spoken with in the satellite industry have said that there's a lot of cybersecurity work that really needs to happen as the industry is going through a pretty big transformation right now and over the last few years. In the past, this was really dominated by government space missions, government contractors. And now companies in the last few years have entered, such as Elon Musk's SpaceX and other startups, and it's continuing to grow. So people say that in the future, satellites will be built with new components and software that cost less money and will be easier to access, so you know more cheaper commercial products. But that comes with the risk that it could introduce cybersecurity vulnerabilities. To some extent, that's a problem that's really common across lots of industries. As technology grows and, and new types of products become available, they might introduce new cybersecurity challenges. And people are just saying, we need to think about how to actually solve these and secure satellites. Yeah, I mean, we've seen that you know, here on the ground. We've talked about it on the show. Maybe a third-party vendor has a cyber breach, and it affects companies that weren't even really aware that they were using some of it. But is there a reason, you know, apart from its growth, that the space sector thinks that it needs to start making these changes, putting these guidelines in place now? It's a good question. It's also, a, there are so many different stages involved. There's a long development life cycle to satellites, and then you have people communicating with satellites on Earth. There are a lot of different points where an attacker could intercept communications with a satellite or target you know, ground stations on Earth or the satellite in space. So there are a lot of parts that are vulnerable. In February, there was a cyber attack on a satellite operated by the American company Viasat that targeted modems that were located in Ukraine. So that was the day that Russia invaded Ukraine, and the attack ended up knocking out internet connectivity for thousands of people in Europe, and also affecting wind farms in Germany. So the wind farms were still able to operate, but the cyber attack took out the remote monitoring systems, which just made it really difficult for the companies to know what was happening with the wind farms at that time. So the U.S. and European countries later said Russia was behind that cyber attack. Russia consistently denies that it's involved in cyber attacks and that it launches cyber attacks on the West. And people I've spoken with in the space industry said, well, you know, this is something that's bound to happen again in the future. This is just one example of what's possible. But it certainly brought a lot of attention to satellite cybersecurity and also to how important satellites are to our daily life and how people rely on them for many things. I mean, we do rely on satellites and the information that they gather or provide so much. So what are these German standards that are being proposed and why would they help? So these German guidelines, it's a technical document. It really spells out basic cybersecurity steps that companies in the satellite industry can take and also common risk factors. So it goes through, again, the different parts of that life cycle of a satellite, including things like when it's being transported around from site to site and when it's going through different types of tests and then when it's in orbit, which can last for several years. One of the big challenges that also these guidelines addresses is that satellites can stay in space for 10 or so years. And it's difficult and risky for operators who are on Earth to issue security or system upgrades to a satellite that's already in space without introducing new risks. It's a delicate system that comes with really complicated engineering challenges. It's not like engineers can just press a button and start a security upgrade like we can do on our smartphones or our other home devices. Are there any guidelines in place now for cybersecurity in the satellite or space industry? 
So there aren't. The German cybersecurity agency says that their guidelines are the first of its kind to really address the satellite industry broadly. There are security requirements for government space missions, but the different experts and researchers that I've spoken with who work in the space say that there's a real need for rules and guidance out there for commercial operators around the world. How is the international community then reacting to the the idea that they might follow these German guidelines or that there need to be guidelines? Everyone I've spoken with has really emphasized the need for there to be some kind of international consensus on how companies in the satellite industry address at least some of the basics in cybersecurity. Because space missions really often involve companies based in different countries and the supply chain is international. So the German guidelines, even the German cybersecurity agency itself says, this is really just a start. We want to use this as a basis to go and talk with our partners in other countries in the US and Europe and try to get some kind of common version of this that we can all agree on. And the the private companies that are involved in this industry, are they reacting in the same way? The ones that I've spoken with have said this is really essential. I think for some of the bigger operators, these might be some of the things that they already do anyway, some of the kind of basic cybersecurity things that they already think about. But they say this makes it easier for us to go to maybe the other, the smaller vendors in our supply chain and say, do you comply with this and this rule? Do you think about this kind of risk? Because it's a document that they can all refer to. All right. That was our reporter, Catherine Stepp. Thanks so much for joining us, Catherine. Thank you. And that's it for today's tech news briefing. If you want more tech stories, check out our website, wsj.com. And if you like our show, please rate and review it. You can do that wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Thanks for listening.